Hello all, welcome to the video lecture. In this video lecture, we will be discussing about the motion. In real world, things really move. We can see here cars move along the roads and planes are flying, everything are changing around us. We can see here the boat's boat is moving and we can see here the basketball player is trying to grab the ball from its opponent player and in computer vision we also want to deal with motion but the interesting thing is actually nothing is moving and let's see a repeated GIF sequence we can see here it's a repeated GIF sequence and it's actually a sequence of static frames or images and the issue is when we look at them they are not separated in time so much so we see this as a nice motion <coughs> sorry so what we want is, as being a student of computer vision, uh, we want the perception that we have in our brain and we, we want uh, that uh, the computer or machine would also have the same perception or same uh, or understand the motion that we understand. So uh, in another way, uh, what we want uh, is we would like the machine to be able to understand the notion of motion or understand the motion as our brain does. So as we are going to talk about the motion, we start talking about the video. And here we can see the video is a sequence of frames captured over time. Usually it's captured very quickly and uh, uh, they, they can't change a whole lot from one sequence to one sequence sample to the next and usually taken at the regular intervals whether it's 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second or 24, second, 24 frames per second the idea is it's at the regular intervals and now the image is not just a function of uh, x and y but also the time so the signal is i x of t we can see here signal is i x of t however what happens here is uh, as I said before, sometimes when we describe the video as a three-dimensional function like this, we tend to think that the three dimensions as being the same, but in reality they are not same, like space is quite different than the time. And let's see some applications of uh, motion in computer vision. A simple one is the background subtraction. We might have a situation where we have a study camera and we have got an object moving in the background a foreground and our goal is to pull out that foreground object we can see here uh, in this uh, in this example we can see here like a boy is uh, moving he's dancing or something like he's uh, he's uh, he's a uh, uh, he is dancing or he is like he is in movement and uh, how about the background is static so we can pull out the foreground object and uh, we can s we can be uh, we can be able to track it or model its dynamics or recognize it or some or something else that's focused on the object so uh, we can once we recognize it or we can track it we can subtract it from the background and another uh, application might be what we call the short detection and that's illustrated here we can see here the, in the figure so the idea is here we have a bunch of frames that are in the video and commercially produced video is usually made up of a sequence of shots and it's shot coming from a particular camera the camera might be moving or it may be panning or it might be dialing maybe it's translating and uh, we will cut to the different shots. Uh, in this particular case our sort boundary is shown right here we can see here at the sort boundary and sort A is taken from one camera and sort B from another and often they look like they are taken one right after the another but uh, in reality they, uh, they are changed uh, everything they 
like the, the camera is moved around the actors are changed and the next shot is taken and then they cut them and they are together and if we think about what that would look like to a particular computer in a one case it might have a nice smooth background moving with some objects and moving within it and then the there is rapid change and uh, we might be we might have another camera which might not be static and it might be moving as well and the analysis of that motion might allow us to do the short detection so here we will do some kind of short detection using the uh, by understanding the motion of the object inside the scene and another example is uh, motion based segmentation suppose we have a bunch of objects that are moving in different way within a scene and we would like to separate out each of these objects and that's referred to as a motion segmentation and we segment the video into multiple coherently moving objects uh, they are moving but moving in independent way here is a static image which consists of a snake and mongoose and the color of a snake and mongoose is very much similar to the background and if we are to track these things we can see only pixels which are just coming and going so uh, we can if we want to segment it uh, just uh, without any uh, without any motion information then we can uh, it will be quite difficult because we can see the pixel the the color of the uh, objects and the background is almost same so but if we are to look at the motion and we can see motion of snake being coherent thing and the motion of mongoose being coherent thing and we can use the motion to segment this object because we can see the motion of snake and the mongoose are it may be different so if we have that uh, motion if we can understand that motion or if we understand the uh, pattern of that motion then we can segment these objects by using the motion and there are other applications uh, of the motion in computer vision like a structure from motion we um, we construct uh, we reconstruct 3d shape from motion and alignment uh, like it's used for global motion compensation and it, it can be used for camcorder video st stabilization uav video analysis and video compression like video compression is also in video compression and the motion est estimation and compensation is used for especially for the compression of the image more efficient in more efficient way we uh, estimate the motion and more the efficient video compression will be so <coughs> now in our subsequent slides we'll be talking about motion estimation Generally, there are two approaches to do the motion estimation. First approach is the feature-based method. Here, what we do is we extract visual features like corners, textured area, and track them across the multiple frames. That is, find them one frame to another frame that will give us the sparse motion field. And the other motion method is the direct or dense method. Here, we directly recover the motion at each pixel from the spatial temporal image brightness variations this method give us dense motion fields but it can be sensitive to the appearance variations so this type of analysis is suitable for the video where we are getting samples very quickly so things don't move very much in a time or things don't move very fast and in fact if things are somewhat smooth in time and space we can say we can use this method so here we will discuss in more detail about the motion estimation for motion estimation the first thing we have to do is define the optical flow or optic flow here the optic flow is apparent motion of objects or surface here what we have is a, we can see here in the figure that we have rubik's cube looking device although it's grayscale image it's been placed on a turntable and uh, that's been rotating around if we look at the little patterns on the side, like if we look at the little patterns on the side, we can see what the rotation is. And but 
what is little to hard to see is that over here like on the right side of the corner right uh, here the little arrows that are showing us the motion and of course the motion is greater at the front of the turntable and then say on the cube because it's closer to us and it's rotating a uh, further distance and but we notice uh, here is that there is no arrows on the white part of the turntable we can see like even that turntable is also moving it's moving exactly the same way as the part of the turntable uh, like that has a marking on it but we can't see the, um, it so there is no apparent motion because there is no contrast there is no texture no indication that the pattern is moving so the optical flow is recovering the apparent motion of objects points or surfaces so here are the some other examples like here is the Amberg taxi sequences and we can see here the uh, the motion vector or we can see the uh, motion vector of the uh, video sequence where a player is playing a uh, table tennis or ping pong and here is another uh, example where the uh, like the tree is moving we can hear the uh, movement of tree is tracked in this particular example so let's look at the very simple definition of the problem uh, here we will see the problem of optical flow or optic flow here we have four points and conveniently color coded so we can tell their difference and there is uh, their location x y at some time t and uh, what we see here they all are going to move at some direction and uh, uh, that uh, movement will be at t plus 1 time at time t plus 1 and they are at a different location we can see here at time t plus 1 location we can see they have changed their position so the points move in the direction of arrow uh, we don't actually get to see them doing the movement between t and t plus because we only get samples of t and t plus 1 but that's showing only how they move and in some sense we can say our goal is to recover the arrows and now the question is how to estimate the pixel motion from ix plus yt to ix yt plus 1 and we're trying to estimate that motion and so what we have to do in order to estimate this pixel motion is essentially solve the correspondence problem and given some pixel in i x y t we have to look for nearby pixels of the same color of same color in i x uh, i x y t plus one and solving this problem is referred to as optic flow problem and in particular uh, we have to look at the two words here one is the uh, notion of nearby and we have to look at what we mean by same color like what we do is we want to look at these terms nearby and same color little more carefully and so we have two key assumptions here the notion of same color and the nearby the same color is referred to as a color constancy or basically this says that a point at i x y t uh, if we knew how move how it moved to point uh, x y t plus one uh, that point will be of the same color if it's grayscale that point will be of the same brightness that is the color constancy or brightness constancy uh, what we mean is like the brightness of the any pixel at t plus at any time t will be same there will be no changes in the color in uh, while changing from while it's uh, while it's moved from uh, time t to t plus one 
and second thing is is we're gonna assume that these points don't move very far from one time to the next time or from t uh, from t to t plus one that's called the opti uh, that's the small motion and it's called the optical flow problem and uh, so let's look at these equations more carefully the brightness constancy it's the brightness constancy uh, constancy equation what we're gonna do is assume we know that some pixel is moving in amount uv where u is amount in x and b is the amount in y like it's moved from it's displaced from uh, like the it's displaced from uh, from x to x plus u and y to y plus b the brightness constancy constraint can be written as like this here i x t is equal to i x plus u y plus b and t plus one uh, that is the image at t at location x y uh, the uh, like the with the brightness if grayscale or color if its color is going to be same at t plus one at the location x plus u and y plus b where you, as I have um, said before u and b are the amount the point has moved in x direction and y direction this is called the brightness constancy constraint and the second assumption was that we get a very small amount of motion and that's let's assume that u and b are like uh, one pixel or a part of pixel or just things are changing smoothly and uh, uh, what that means is we can estimate a Taylor series expansion here and uh, what we can see here is uh, that the value of an image displaced from x uh, by u and uh, mm, displaced uh, from y by v is approximately uh, it is its original value like i x y plus gradient in x directions times delta x and gradient of uh, y uh, gradient of like it's a gradient of x and gradient of y into v plus some higher term and uh, if we make those higher terms zero then it will look like this makes to uh, and then we say that's the that's it's uh, an approximation we say uh, we can say the image at i x plus u y plus p is approximately original image plus gradient in x times uh, u uh, plus the gradient of y times uh, v that is uh, delta u or delta v <coughs> uh, delta x and delta y now once we combine these two equations we can see here like uh, i x u i x plus u y plus p and t plus the difference between uh, these two uh, image intensity will be zero and we uh, substitute uh, this uh, uh, equation from the Taylor, Taylor series and it will give us this expression mm. here the question arises like uh, we can say that x u plus uh, u plus x uh, that x i x u plus uh, u uh, like here t plus 1 and t are kept uh, it's uh, like it's kept uh, same here so we can see that it's same for t or t plus 1 and uh, here it is the difference we can see here uh, okay uh, now we can see here it is the difference between i x y t plus 1 and i x uh, yt it's a derivative in t directions and we can say it as a temporal derivative as our image is a function of x y and t so we can take the derivative in x y and t and we can see i x dotted with the u 
and i y dotted with v we can write it in the vector form like just like this it plus uh, delta i dot uv and uh, uh, as the limit uh, we can see here in the limit as u and v approaches to zero we can write it as zero not just the approximation we can s say that zero is equal to it plus uh, delta i into dot uv and now this is the uh, equation of the brightness constant c and we can further write it as a ix u plus iyv plus it is equal to zero now here a question arises like how many unknowns and how many equations for pixels we know the number of unknowns is easy to say like what we were trying to solve for that is u and v and uh, uh, here we have two unknowns but only one equations for pixels so it's very hard to solve uh, things that have got twice as, twice as much unknown as we have in the equations so we have different uh, u and v possibly for every pixels so we have got two times the number of pixels uh, unknown so now let's see the equation of brightness constancy here this equation represents a stretch line in the uh, u and v space we can see i x u plus i y v plus uh, i t is equal to zero here it represents the equation of stretch line where uh, and it's spanned in the u and v space and uh, now um, we can write it as a uh, which looks like this like v is equal to minus i x uh, divided by i y u minus i t divided by i y uh, here the ratio of i x and i y gives us the slope and ratio of i t and i y gives us the intercept so now we can interpret this equation uh, like this here like in the figure if we take u is equal to 0 and the v will become um, minus i t divided by i y and v is then uh, like we can find out the uh, uh, value of u which is minus i t divided by here we can see minus v will be when uh, when u is 0 then when v is 0 then u will be minus i x divided by i y and when v is when u is 0 then v will be minus i t divided by i y so this is the equation of line where the optical flow will lie anywhere like the optical flow will lie within this line and now for any point we can derive three derivatives like ix, iy and it that we have already uh, said and using this equation we can know that optical flow will be anywhere in the line however we don't know the unique value because uh, we know th that the optical flow the value of u and v will be in between uh, within this line but we don't know the exact position or exact location or we don't know the unique u and v value because it's one equation and two unknown so let's uh, say like uh, suppose someone say like it that the uh, that uh, this u prime v prime location this u prime v prime location is the tr true optical flow or it is the location uh, of the uh, u and v or this is the solution then this vector u dash uh, u prime uh, u u u hat and v hat uh, we we can take it uh, and divide it into two vectors here like the vector d vector d and the vector p and the vector d is the normal flow we call we can estimate it uh, using this expression i can say that this is the uh, normal flow and however the vector p uh, which is parallel to the flow vector uh, we cannot estimate it and suppose another guess here 
uh, suppose here is another guess like this point another guess this let's say it as a p hat and uh, here uh, in this again we divide it into two parts and uh, this uh, d and p plus this uh, this this uh, this distance from this p point to um, this new location and here also is this, the problem is same like we can estimate the d th that will be the same but we will have to uh, we will have to estimate the different parallel flow so uh, we can find d from the derivatives but we don't know the second part which is the parallel flow that's the under constraint nature of this equation and this is called the aperture problem in this aperture problem we can only know this d value and uh, but we don't know the distance from this point to the point where it lands or point where the exact solution we get so let's see a simple example here is a very uh, interesting line drawing uh, it's a line with the two paths and notice it's uh, 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 it has a corner and we can see it moving like it's moving back and forth it's moving back and forth and let's put aperture over here uh, and now here is the great big aperture now mm, we're gonna move uh, that line uh, th in the same way like th when we move the line in same way uh, like it goes like uh, we uh, which uh, it just looks like it's moving up like uh, yeah we can see this line is moving up and if we look it in the transparent way uh, like if we put if we replace that uh, big aperture with the transparent aperture it has the same motion you can see here it has the same motion uh, and if you look at the corner we can tell that this is moving over here and like it's moving here and there but if we just look at inside of the circle it looks like it's moving up uh, so uh, if we just look at inside of circle uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it looks just like uh, it's uh, moving from um, uh, moving from down to up and not uh, down and over and that's the aperture problem and we can only tell that the motion locally uh, in the direction of in the direction perpendicular to the edge here it shows like we can say that it is moving uh, we can only get the information of the motion that is locally in the direction uh, direction which is perpendicular to the edge and this is the aperture problem and in our next uh, class we will see how to uh, get rid of this aperture problem